All right, well, in this section, we're going to be looking at the properties of viscosity and surface tension. And we want to see how the intermolecular forces affect viscosity and surface tension. Um, essentially, the quick answer is the stronger, uh, the stronger the intermolecular forces are, the higher the viscosity will be, and uh, the higher the surface tension will be. So let's take a look. All right, so viscosity is essentially the resistance to flow. Uh, uh, another way you can think about it is how thick a, a fluid is. So more viscous substances are more thick or thicker. Uh, for example, over here on the left, on the right side of the screen, we've got uh, we've got two motor oils, and we will find that the higher the number in the motor oil, the higher its viscosity. And uh, they are designed either for different types of engines or for different operating temperatures. So we'll see that we've got different types of oil over there. So what we're going to find is uh, that uh, we'll find that the easier the molecules can move past each other, the lower the viscosity is going to be. And the faster the molecule, or the, the more difficult it is for the molecules to move past each other, the higher the viscosity will be. We'll find that viscosity will increase with increasing intermolecular forces, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. Down here on this graph, you can see hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. Uh, we, they're just uh, molecules of different sizes. As, as we get larger, uh, we're going to have uh, stronger intermolecular forces, and you'll see that the viscosity increases as we go down that list. We'll also find that vis viscosity will, um, will decrease as we increase the temperature. You may have noticed this before if you've ever had like pancake syrup. Uh, uh, for you know, for your pancakes, um, if it if you got it right out of the fridge, it's really slow when it pours. Uh, but if you take it and heat it up in the microwave for you know 30 seconds or something, you can get that to flow a lot faster. So uh, there's an experiment you can do this weekend. All right. The other property that we want to look at that's related to this is, <clears throat> excuse me, is surface tension. Surface tension uh, is the difference in surface energies uh, uh, between two substances. Uh, we'll see that uh, we'll see here. Water has a fairly high surface tension, and we've got a a uh, water bug that is uh, it's called a water strider uh, that can stand on top of the water. And the reason that it can do that is because it has a very high uh, um, there's a very high surface tension between the legs and the water. Um, if we if we look at the picture down here, the little drawing, we've we've got uh, uh, molecules that are inside the liquid, all right? That are inside the liquid. They're being pulled on from in all different directions, uh, but the ones that are at the surface, they um, they are not. They do not have a strong intermolecular interaction with the substance that is right above it. Usually, this is caused by a difference in polarity, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a very big difference in polarity uh, to have a big surface tension. Another advantage that the water bugs have is if you blow up the leg, if you look at the leg in, uh, under a scanning electron micrograph, you'll see that there's a high surface area for the, for the leg of that water bug. And that high surface area um, high surface area will result in making it more difficult to submerge that underwater. All right. And then here um, I want to look at capillary action. Uh, capillary action is the uh, action that something has. It can, it can uh, like water can kind of crawl up the edge of, of glass. And that's because there's a difference between the adhesive forces and the cohesive forces for uh, uh, for these liquids. For water, the adhesive force between water and glass is pretty strong, whereas the 
cohesive force is also pretty strong, but um, the adhesive force is a little bit stronger. And as a consequence, we'll see that there is a concave surface on the surface of water, uh, meaning that it has a, um, that it increases the contact area between the water and the glass. Uh, on the contrary, we've got mercury. Mercury has very strong cohesive forces, and they're much stronger than the adhesive forces uh, between mercury and glass. And as a consequence, we will find that it minimizes contact area with the glass. And uh, so, so the uh, mercury has a very uh, strong surface energy, and it has, uh, 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 and it also has a much higher cohesive force than adhesive force. All right, so we want to look at 31 and 32. So we want to explain these following observations. The surface tension of CHBr3 is greater than that of CHCl3. Okay, well the reason, uh, um, the uh, reason for that is that CHBr3 uh, uh, has much stronger intermolecular forces. So CHBr3 has and of course um, the reason that it has stronger intermolecular forces is because it is, um, is because it is larger. Uh, it's going to have um, greater London dispersion forces and therefore stronger intermolecular forces. All right. Uh, as temperature increases, oil f flows faster through a narrow tube. Well, as we saw earlier, um, the resistance to flow is viscosity. So as we increase temperature, we decrease the viscosity, and that means that it will flow faster. So as we increase temperature, the viscosity, uh, viscosity, Uh, uh, here, let's try that again. The viscosity uh, decreases. So, and of course, as that viscosity decreases, uh, it will flow faster. Raindrops that collect on a waxed automobile, ho automobile hood take on a nearly spherical shape. All right, well... Um, if you've got, uh, if you've got a automobile, automobile hood and it's not waxed, what we'll find is that the water will spread out. It has less surface tension when it is all spread out. But then if you wax it, uh, there's a big difference in the surface energy between the waxed automobile hood and the, and the water. And that results in a high surface tension. So when we've got wax on there, it has a high surface tension. The wax high surface tension tension with water. All right, so now we want to look at, so hydrazine, hydrogen peroxide, and water all have exceptionally high surface tensions in comparison with other substances of comparable molecular weights. First, draw the Lewis structures for each of these compounds. All right, so for the first one, for hydrazine, all right, so that is for hydrazine, and then hydrogen peroxide. And water. All right. 
So when we look at those, uh, uh, clearly the key characteristic for each of these is that they are all capable of hydrogen bonding. So, so they are all. All right, and since they're all capable of hydrogen bonding, um, then they will have much stronger intermolecular forces than things that are not capable of hydrogen bonding. And that is our rationale behind that. All right, I'm going to stop this section of the video.